Hello, everyone. How are we doing today? Y'all, today we are, uh, I'm about to do a book review. And the book review, the book review is uh, on a book that's called More Than Enough. More Than Enough by Elaine Wilteroth. I have to say it slow, child, by Elaine Wutherot. I hope I said her name right, okay? But we're about to get into this book. Um, listen, before I do, if you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe because on my channel, for those of you who are new, I talk about the same thing I talk about on my podcast. I talk about books, business, faith, and finances because this is how we change our lives we change it through conversations through training through inviting things in our life for those of you who do not know me honey my name is jackie mckeever i am a business coach i have an mba with a graduate certificate in accounting what i do is i help individuals i help small business owners stop self-sabotaging their success get productive with sales strategies to help them get them some clients but on this channel i also like i said i talk about books business faith and finances so y'all today's book back to the topic is more than enough by elaine wilthroth and for those of you who don't know her, um, she's currently one of the judges on Project One Runway, but she's famous because at an early age, she became the editor in chief of Teen Vogue. Um, she, um, she is a biracial, um, half white, half black, um, black woman who changed the the look of Teen Vogue. No longer were they, when she came on the scene, no longer were they just a fashion um, magazine to be looked at by, I don't know, the world, you know? Uh, and she had very humble beginnings. I want to tell, I, listen, if y'all didn't know, this is information that I didn't make up. It's in her book. You want to read it, but I, I'm in this YouTube, in this YouTube video, I'm going to share you some uh, spoilers that's from this book. And let me tell y'all, I got coffee and makeup all on my book. I don't know if y'all saw this, but this book is worn out. It's worn out. I know it's the 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 real word is worn, but I'm being trying to be funny. But it's worn out. I don't know if y'all can see. I got makeup on top. I got coffee on it. Chad, I was into this book, honey. I read this book slowly. So first of all, I want to tell y'all that the book is 320 pages. And she even gave a little extra in the back for you to fill out. And I thought that was cute. It says more than enough, you, you fill out your name. I am claiming space for blank, no matter what blank may say more than enough. Elaine, y'all see that? That is trying to put this in frame. That is too cute. So yeah, if you haven't read the book or you're interested, I'm not gonna tell you everything in the book, but I am gonna give y'all some spoilers. So let's get really deep into this topic. Y'all, listen, I was going to use a different stream today because I was testing something out, but it did not work. But you know, the show must go on. So let me give y'all this example. So to start with, her her mother's a Black woman, and she, she got this job in California, and she met this Caucasian woman. And little did she know, you some time later she'd be marrying this woman's son and she gave birth to elaine and her brother now what i like about this uh book is she she allows you to get 
up close and personal because she shared some things that I was like, oh, she was so brave to say that. I don't know if I would have put it in a book. Anyway, but she sh gives y'all um, th some of the things that she was thinking because her being biracial, half black and half white, she had to deal with a lot of um, and her being so young and, and getting all that success, she had to deal with uh, racism, of course. She had to deal with some ageism. And some of the people that she cared about, she had to deal with, with it with them. And it just shows the, the changing of the tie, time or the, the, the events that were going on a time. because And one of the things uh, that I like about it that I could relate with her is because in the book she talked about when she went um, down south and she visited her Black family, her mother's people, how uh, somebody came up and said, who who is that white girl with you? Because they knew she was biracial. Like she at this particular time at a young age, she could never quite fit in. She was like too white for black people. And then she was too black for the white people that were in her in her area. And she had a hard time um, getting friends and she learned to uh, adapt or assimilate certain behaviors to fit in. And uh now i didn't learn to assimilate the uh behaviors to fit in but i really can understand about her feeling like she was too black around um white people and black people thinking that she was too white to really fit in because i myself because you hear the way i talk right had that because um for those of you who don't know me, where I grew up, I grew up um, in government in government house, and I grew up in that system. And so, I was raised by a school teacher, and she taught us to sp speak proper English. Now, I know as an adult or as a uh, a content creator, you often hear me sometimes come in with some ebonics. Um, trust and believe some of that is just establishing a comfortability or just being entertaining you know because i am very live <laughs> anyway so yeah i could really relate and those things especially when you're coming up and you hear those things it makes you feel like you're not enough and those of you who are listening to this who who uh follow my channel. I hope that you go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell because we're truly on my channel. We're taking your life back, your life and business back with and with your pen, right? And your pen, okay? So I also talk about some planning. But let me give y'all a sample from this book and I try not to have make this too long. First, I want to give you a quote. So what happens is she met this boy, right? And this black guy, and he had a lot of confidence. And I, I believe that he was biracial, but he had a lot of confidence as a black man. And that's one of the things that attracted her. And she referred to him in, in her book as first love. But in that, in, in that, uh, toxic relationship he often mistreated her um he may not have physically abused her but he mentally and verbally abused her by making her feel like she wasn't enough she shouldn't be respected she shouldn't be loved the way she should be loved and so he took her for granted um she talked about in the book where they may have been writing together and he wanted her to sit in the back seat while his friend sat up front and how she worked really hard to be accepted with him by him um and the way the the writing the way she wrote it's like to me in my opinion it was like if he could accept her it was like the black race was accepting her then she said he was fine chair okay 
that helped. But one of the quotes I wanted to read, it says, if your boyfriend has you sitting in the back seat of any, anyone, for anyone but his own mother, he is not the one, period, the end. And I... I think that is a great lesson because a lot of times we go, we bend over backward and we think that because we're women, um, we're supposed to take anything. It doesn't mean that you have to go run around with a chip over your shoulder um, trying to make sure that nobody takes advantage of you. But first, you have to yes you have to teach people how to treat you and you don't have to accept any type of behavior. You really don't. And you also do not have to act a fool because somebody else is acting a fool. Okay. Straighten up your crown, sis. Okay. And, and get to walking. So I do love that fact that she shared that. She also shared an example of her and her Caucasian friends. They were like laughing and giggling and having a good time. And she had got to the point where, you know, she was assimilating behavior, right? So she shared, but she didn't really come, you know, share much um, with her friends. So they may not have known how she felt, like she felt in between two worlds. Well, one particular time they were laughing and giggling and one friend told the other one to go get something. And so the one of her white friends said to the other white friend do uh what am i your slave and then they immediately looked at elaine because she was a black person and they felt ashamed because they inadvertently said that um and of course she shared that in the book and she said she's still friends to that girl today. And the girl kept apologizing, kept apologizing. She said it without really thinking. And it and reading that just made me think about how our society today, our business, our businesses, um, not just small businesses, will have to put more emphasis in creating an environment that is multicultural you know having conversations with people to let them know what's inappropriate and what's appropriate you know being that example of that you know because um one of the th time like i'm 47 i've been in environments where people weren't very sensitive to that and where people use words that they would not use in front of other races um boldly and say that and and my generation and generation before would have been sensitive to those words and i'm not going to express what those words are those of you listen to me if you hadn't lived under a rock you know what those words said they are not appropriate okay and we have to be sensitive to the people that are around us and you know even if we're joking you should not joke like that that's just my opinion. That's my two cents. It won't buy you a stick of gum, but that's my two cents. It'll change your world and make things easier for you. And you won't have to run around apologizing for poor behavior. So I want to read another area in the book that I, I liked. Um, she mentioned like i told you she was in transition aligning herself with the current time she says the first couple of years of college you feel like you have all the time in the world to explore different majors take up new hobbies like partying and maybe even fit in some naps love some naps okay so then junior senior year hits and she said, S-H-I-T gets real. During my junior year, uh, I became laser focused on finding a summer internship that would open up doors for her. Remember, she felt like she had something to prove, right? Not just uh, for herself, but for everybody around her to prove that she was enough, really. So anyway, I didn't know what I was looking for exam exactly, but I knew 
that I love writing, storytelling, psychology, and style. I also, I mean, I have also always had a strong eye for visuals, the world of media, and advertising. Felt like the right place to start my Google search. It was like a win winning an internship jackpot when I discovered the multicultural advertising intern program, a gateway for students of color to land paid internship to top advertising agencies all over the world. For many young people of color, this program provides the only forehold, foothold for into an industry that we might otherwise be locked out of. The program also offers a rich network of media professionals who lead who lead career workshops and host networking events. Okay, so then after she did a vigorous search, she found um, an internship, right? internship but the thing is the reason one of the reasons why I, I added this because a lot of times when we go to school we don't always know exactly what we want but if you um if you're lost right now one of the things you can do is as she did you want to write down some of the things you like like she knew she liked media she knew she liked advertising she knew she liked psychology deep she liked style she liked storytelling and she loved writing and those things she googled and she land and she did research so no matter whatever you, whatever career you want you want to get comfortable with research okay so that's the only reason why I outline I put little sticky notes so that I could read y'all little inserts and talk about it a little bit okay so on to the next one on to the next one one of my inserts fell out but it'll be all right so here's something else so in the book she talked about she experienced burnout so i'm just gonna fast forward hopefully i don't go too far um when she became editor-in-chief right she was uh she went from essence to team vogue so she talked about experience burnout she was so out to prove prove that she was enough prove that um what she was doing can change the race. She felt like an icon, a role model, and it put a lot of pressure on her, um, a lot of undue pressure where she was not taking time to take care of herself, right? One of the quotes, she says, nothing good can grow if you don't nourish your own soul. And that's important. You know, we cannot forget about ourselves. I remember, uh, I, for one, had to learn to show myself some compassion, show myself some some grace and do some of the things that I love, you know, because over 20 years, I spent so much time serving everybody else, serving my family, serving my job, you know, just give, give, give. And then when my family had got grown and I got ended up in divorce and I no longer were employed some of the places that I was employed, I felt lost. And it's because I did not take time to nourish me, nourish the things that I love, nourish who I am, give, my, give to myself, you know? And some people will try, especially when they're used to using you up until you dry, they'll tell you, honey, they will tell you, how dare you not do that? You're so selfish. And it's good to be a little selfish, honey, because if you if if you burn yourself out, okay, you can't help nobody. And that's really simply learning to operate in your overflow.
So in here, she said she tried to push through. She just kept telling herself, oh, girl, you had to push through. And it was really affecting her blood pressure. Here's another quote. Women aren't taught to get comfortable with making people uncomfortable. See, we're taught to just deal with it, deal with it. People treat you bad, deal with it. It's okay, you got a good position. You don't wanna ruin it. Don't speak up, just take whatever peanuts they give you. And meanwhile, you end up stressed out, broke and lost. So she ended up meeting a, another guy and another guy and I forgot what she called him she didn't call him first love she called him I didn't see I lost the page and I don't remember what she called him but she met this other guy and he seemed to check all the bells and whistles he had a nice career he had seemed like he had things put together right um, it was some time after she had broke up with her first love because she dated first love back and forth a long time before she decided, let, listen, I got to let that brother go. And she met this guy. He was he seemed to be treating her uh, in the beginning with respect. But during the course of their relationship, even though she was being successful in her career, she was failing in this second relationship. Um, this guy had narcissistic, in my opinion, a uh, narcissistic behavior. I think she even described it as narcissistic. He began to criticize everything that she did. Everything that she did was not good enough, right? Um, and she tried to either cook for him or something got burnt. And so he used that as an excuse to break up with her. And she was so hurt. She couldn't figure out how could she change it because at this time she didn't feel like she was enough, that she, she felt like she had to put up with all this mess, right? She was study searching for herself um, and he broke up with her. Well, during the time that they weren't together, there was a party and she dressed all to the nines because she was determined to get her man back and he ignored her the whole night later on she received a letter about about him saying that while they was together that he was in another relationship um she found out and her and her friend you know she talked to she Okay, so she ended up getting back with him later. They made up, but she ended up also getting a letter from an anonymous woman saying that at the time that they were together that he was cheating on her because they end up living in two different cities and that there was even a pregnancy scare. Apparently, the uh, apparently allegedly the girl had gotten an abortion and she was heartbroken. She thought that this man was going to be her husband, even though he was treating her the way she was. And I'm going to tell you, ladies, I don't care what that man said. It's if he's coming at you with narcissistic behavior, making you feel like nothing you do is good enough, he's not satisfied with anything, even if he uses the word, I love you, he does not love you, he loves himself. and get out any way you can make sure you plan and get out get out of that relationship because it's not even worth it it's not worth it if somebody cannot treat you does not treat you with respect no matter who they are with they are not worth your time they are not worth your energy and i know sometimes it takes a while depending on the situation to get out of that relationship but let me tell you you can first leave instantly by leaving uh emotionally okay leaving that man that person mentally and then uh, until you can actually leave that man physically so anyway 
they ended up breaking up and later on um after she talked to him she found i mean you know after she found out this stuff she talked to her roommate and her roommate knew about it right and she found out that the whole reason why he broke up with her check this out honey is because of the girl got pregnant and he was and he was about to be outed there is no way he was going to hide that pregnancy that's why he used that excuse that lame excuse to break up with her because i believe deep down he knew she would break up with him because she didn't have no business with him anyway and thank god all this stuff happened and came to light because it gave her the strength, the energy she needed to get out of that horrible relationship. Because she would never have met the love of her life, the father of her child, who she is married to now. There are so many tips that she gave. She even gave some career tips in this book. Um, she has this book, this, uh, this area, this chapter is called Lemonade. And she quoted Maya Angelou. I go forth alone and I stand as 10,000. She talked about think, uh, Team Vogue, about them changing things, and changing of the guards, and about them shutting down. And during this time she was getting ready for an event um a summit and of course she also um the company had also made her an offer and she was getting ready to negotiate an offer they were going back and forth and she was debating whether to um uh, continue on this journey with the company because they were going from having physical books to just having a digital platform. They were actually gonna allow her to write, to create a position because they wanted to keep her in her place. Um, excuse me, not in her place. They wanted to keep her with the company because they realized at that particular time that she was a very valuable asset to the company. And so at the end of it, she made a decision that changed her life and she honored who, who she was. Now, what she decide and what she actually did, y'all, y'all got to catch this book. This is a really good book, More Than Enough by Elaine uh, Welteroth. <laughs> That's a mouthful, y'all. Check that book out read it y'all in the comments if you've already read this book tell me what you think about this book y'all that's it that's my good bad and ugly review of more than enough listen i want to thank you all for watching if you have not subscribed make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel and thank you so much for watching see you later